Hey everybody, this is Jim Prusak from The Pain PT. And today we're going to talk about Pavlov's dog and chronic pain conditioning. And this is a really interesting thing because if you haven't heard about Pavlov's dog, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the role of association between certain behaviors, movements, or things we do in pain. And how there's certain things that become conditioned in our brains to actually cause pain. So I want to talk about this today because it's really important when we're talking about the recovery of chronic pain. So Pavlov was a Russian physiologist and in, in the 1890s he did some research uh, with dogs and what he did was he looked at the dog's response to food which we'll call here an unconditioned stimulus and the dogs would respond by salivation through their glands and their mouth. That was their unconditioned response to, let's say, a turkey here. Now, they also did uh, a bell, ringing up a bell. So they rang a bell. The dog didn't respond with any type of salivation because there was no food there. So what they did was they combined the two things together, the food and the bell. So they would ring a bell and then also put the food out, which you can see here is a turkey in the lower left-hand corner. And when the, those two things were put together, the dog salivated, it had an unconditioned response to this. So during this time, Pavlov was conditioning the dog to associate a bell with food. So after enough conditioning, what happened was he would just ring the bell by itself and the dog would salivate. So you had sort of this association between a bell and food for the dog. And so the dog would create the salivation response. Now this is the same thing we see in chronic pain conditioning or pain conditioning. We see what could be normally an unconditioned stimulus like an injury, which creates an unconditioned response, which would be pain. So for example, if I <clears throat> sprain my ankle playing volleyball, I'm going to have a response of pain. So what that's a natural response, right, for an acute pain condition. But with chronic pain conditioning, it becomes a learned response so that we have an injury context and we also develop a memory of an injury. This becomes a conditioned stimulus. And when we combine that with anxiety and stress and the other emotions that go around pain, we create sort of this conditioned response. Now an example of this would be somebody who subconsciously learns to associate walking with pain or even sitting with pain or with doing any type of behavior where if they've had a problem with it where it creates pain the brain learns if it's done enough times the brain learns to associate that behavior with pain and so the very fact of doing the behavior itself can create pain even if there's nothing wrong in the tissues and this is called the classical conditioning or Pavlonian conditioning. We have research that also supports this classical conditioning. There was a study done in 2015. It was a meta-analysis, meaning it looked at a whole bunch of studies. It whittled down 4,800 studies down to 13 studies based on the quality of the study, included 315 people. And what they found here and what they were looking at were the association between nociceptive, which is basically sensory pain, and non-nociceptive stimuli, which is something that's not painful. It could be a behavior like walking or sitting. So they're looking for an association between these two things. And that they're likely, these things are likely to be learned. It's a form of associative learning, it's called. And it follows the principles of Ivan Pavlov. Now, they found in 10 of the studies that evaluated classical conditioning in relation to pain that nine of them found a condition response for pain. One of them did not. The pooled effects of all these studies showed a significant pain increase after conditioning. So the conclusion was that the literature suggests that classical conditioning can amplify pain. And this is what we're talking about here. And I see it so often. People tend to think that a normal behavior is what's causing the pain. And I have many patients who avoid activities and they avoid things because they think that's causing damage 
or that is the cause of the pain. What we have to ask ourselves is what we're doing safe and normal? Is the activity safe and normal that many other people do day in and day out? And the answer is yes. It's most likely that chronic pain it becomes a conditioned response, meaning there is an association between behavior and activity, and that's what causes the pain to continue. So all this happens in the brain, right? The brain is where this takes place. And we know that the subconscious brain is pretty powerful. It's more, has more of an effect on us than our conscious mind. So we're learning at a subconscious level to associate certain activities or behaviors with pain. Just like ringing of the bell with Pavlov's dog, the behavior itself can create the pain response. So what do we need to do? We need to break the cycle. We talked in some of my other videos about breaking the pain cycle. So we have to break this sort of learned condition response cycle, the cycle between the behavior and the pain. And so what we need to do is we need to first unlearn what we've learned, right? We have to unlearn the condition response. And then we need to relearn something new. So for example, if we've learned and our brains have subconsciously learned to associate bending over to pick something up with low back pain, we need to unlearn that response, meaning we have to unlearn that it's a, it's a uh, maladaptive response or it's a dangerous thing to do to bend over and pick something up. We need to relearn that it's okay to do that and that it's normal to bend over and pick something up from the floor with our back. So it's a process of unlearning and then relearning. And we know it's important, what are we feeding our brain? What information are we sending into our brain? And this is really important because this breaks this pain cycle. If we're feeding the same information in that strengthens the cycle, that strengthens that conditioning response, we're actually not going to get better. What we need to do is we need to practice over and over again with repetition this unlearning and relearning process. And we do that by challenging ourselves with the very activities that we avoid and that we stop doing and that we've subconsciously learned that are not okay. And these are the things that actually create pain. So we know that unlearning is more difficult than learning. It's sort of an unwinding process that we have to go through to heal. And as we do that, we can come across what's called extinction bursts. And some of the other people who work in this field have talked about this, whereas actually as we're working to get better and to unlearn and relearn, we have these flare-ups of pain. And they can happen as we're healing. And so they're called extinction bursts. And it's normal. These are sort of normal reactions due to our memory or something that triggers it. But as we keep working through these and we keep working through the process of unlearning and relearning, these extinction bursts become less and less, and eventually it becomes extinct, just like the dinosaurs became extinct. That response gets weaker and weaker, and we put in a new associative learning or a new condition response that is showing that whatever we do is okay. And so that's the message we want to get here, is that the brain learns that what we're doing is okay, and that it's safe, and that it's normal, and that our behaviors are actually going to help us and not hurt us. So this is the process of classical conditioning and how we need to unlearn some of these things and then relearn that the very things we're doing are okay. Hopefully you picked up something here today. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel here, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care.